Hello and welcome, my name is Mr. Buss and I'm going to run through how to conduct lab 8 greenhouse effect experiment. So for this experiment you're going to need um, some clamps. Um, I'm going to use a 100 watt frosted light bulb and you'll want two 500 milliliter Erlenmeyer flasks All right, and you'll want two temperature probes hooked up to a LabQuest and now notice that there's only one difference between both of these Erlenmeyer flasks, they both have um, brown construction paper in the bottom, that's to simulate uh, maybe like dirt on the earth or something like that. And this one has a rubber cap, a rubber stopper, and this one does not. The rubber stopper represents an atmosphere. So I know that there's air in both of these, and that's part of the atmosphere, but for this experiment, this represents um, the atmosphere, and this flask represents basically a planet with an atmosphere. And this flask represents a planet without an atmosphere, hence no stopper. A couple things to check before you get started. One is that um, the light bulb is, I don't know, I'll just tell you how far away this one is away from the table. It's about 10 centimeters from the table. That seems to work pretty well. Um, you'll want to make sure that the paper in, is in both of the flasks. And distance makes a huge deal. You have to make sure that um, the distance that these temperature probes are and that the flasks are away from the bulb is identical. So find a way to check that. Um, for this situation I made it such that the temperature probe is 15 centimeters from this part of the light bulb and I just checked that for both of them. It might take a few minutes to set it up, Doesn't, it's not that difficult, um, but distance is very important. One other thing you might not notice is that um, the Erlenmeyer flasks have a label on them and it wouldn't make sense for one of the labels to face out and one of them to face in. So you want to make sure that they're both facing away. And again, check that your distances are appropriate and that everything is set. What's important to do is make sure that you know which um, temperature probe is plugged into which channel. So for this experiment, I have the Erlenmeyer flask without the stopper plugged into channel 1. And I have the Erlenmeyer flask with the stopper plugged into channel 2. Now let's set up our lab quest for data collection. Um, I'm going to make sure that the rate is 10 and I'm going to change the duration to 30 minutes. So change seconds to minutes. So I've got it set so that it's going to run for 30 minutes and I'm going to take 10 samples per minute. Okay. It's set up. Go ahead and hit play on your lab quest. And turn on your light bulb. Now you're going to let it run for 10 minutes. The lab quest is going to collect data for 30 minutes, but for the first 10 minutes the light bulb is going to be on. For the next 10 minutes the light bulb will be off. And then to finish it off the light bulb will be on again. So you're going to run through an on, off, on, or a day, night, day cycle with 10 minutes on, 10 minutes off, 10 minutes on. 10 minutes, turn off the light. 20 minutes have passed, turn the light bulb back on. Collection is complete, turn off the light bulb. Talk about the science behind this for just a minute. So um, here's, the, uh, here's the idea, light kind of travels through glass, no problem. We know that, obviously. Um, the brown paper is there because the light will travel through the wall of the Erlenmeyer flask and then it'll strike that brown paper, much like light comes through our atmosphere and then strikes the earth. When the light strikes the paper, if it is absorbed and converted into heat energy, the heat, believe it or not, is a different wavelength of energy and it cannot go back through the glass. That's how greenhouses work. They, can, they allow light in, and when the light strikes the surface inside the greenhouse, like the plant or the ground or whatever, and is, and is absorbed, then the energy is now converted to heat energy, and that cannot relieve. It gets trapped, and so obviously, if we're going to have a situation where there's no stopper on here, the heat energy can leave through the top, but it can't leave through the glass. Obviously, if there's a stopper on, the heat energy should theoretically be trapped in there pretty well. And the only way it could leave is, is by um, warming the glass and then the glass on the other side is going to be 
having contact with the air and so on. Once you've collected the data, make sure that your iPad is connected to the LabQuest and go ahead and screenshot that graph. Mine looks a little different than yours might because I was preoccupied and I actually forgot to shut the light off at exactly 10 minutes. I think I must have shut it off at about 14 minutes, but whatever, you can still get the idea. This worked really well. Um, you can totally see that the red line, which represents um, the Erlenmeyer flask without the beaker, without the cap, it didn't heat up very quickly. Um, and the one with the cap definitely was able to heat up and maintain the heat much better.